Did you exist before you were born? Did you exist with God before you were born? We have to look at where we originated, where the human spirit originated from. What is the original intent that God had for us? What was the type of wording that was used? What happened to Adam? What happened to Christ? What does the Bible say about Adam? What does the Bible say about Christ? And uh, if we go to Genesis chapter number 1 verse 26, listen here. The Bible says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So you have image and you have likeness. There were people before Adam. They had the likeness of God, but not the image of God. Adam also lost the image. Christ restored the image. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that the creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female he created them we need to understand the difference between image and likeness spirit and body the body is formed the spirit is created the body is formed from the dust of the earth the spirit man is created way before the body was formed the word likeness it alludes to a form and a shape function walking talking that type of function but the word image is a resemblance, a figure, almost a direct representation, a direct copy. So what happens? Christ comes, restores us back to the image of the Son of God. Once the image is back restored, you have authority again. You are right aligned with Christ. The image of God is back on you. The identity, the original intent, destiny and purpose when the devil looks at you, he sees the image of God. So let's go to Genesis chapter number 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and a man became a living soul. It was a body that was laid lifeless. Then something happened. God came and breathed the breath of life into the body. The word breath Neshama in the Hebrew. It means a wind. It includes divine inspiration and it means soul and spirit in other places in the Old Testament. The word life and living being there is what we call the word chai. It means the life force and that is where we get the eastern power from or spirit from which they call chi. The devil cannot create anything unless it comes from God but it's perverted. So chi is actually biblical, but please, we are not endorsing chi. We are just saying the devil cannot create anything. He perverts it. Chi comes from the original breath of life. It's the soul. So when they operate in that, they operate in soul power. That opens up the doors for demonic power to come in, of course. But it doesn't remove the fact that it originated from God. Ties. The breath of life. Let's go to Leviticus 17 verse 11. It says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. And we're going to look now how this life was given by God, and that's all good, but we were alive before. Now people are like, but why can't we remember? And this and that, because we are interdimensional beings. There's no difference between you and an angel, except the fact that an angel doesn't have the redemptive power of the blood. Why did God not destroy Satan? God cannot destroy a spirit. He can only separate a spirit. There are different laws. And please, when I say God cannot destroy a spirit, I'm not removing his divine attributes and qualities of omnipotency, omniscience, and omnipresence. He's a divine quality of omnipotency because he created the lake of fire. But guess what? They're not destroyed. They're still alive, just burning forever. A spiritual being doesn't operate via the words of destruction and death or destroying. The way we think in this dimension, God had to bring in and create a separation to come. These are spiritual laws. So we are interdimensional beings. That's why you cannot have a memory of what happened. What is revelation about your call? It's simply discovering or remembering the conversation you had with God. Go with me to Revelation chapter number 22 verse 2. In the middle of its streets and either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each yielding its fruit every month. Verse 14, listen to verse 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Did you exist before you were born? For whom he foreknew, prognosco, which speaks of a prognosis and a gnosco, a knowing. That is why we get the word foreknew. 
for whom he foreknew, he also predestined. So there's predestination. But before there's a predestination, there's a foreknowledge. So hold on. These are two separate and two different situations that takes place before birth. The first one that is taking place is what we call foreknew, foreknowledge, a prognosis, a relational knowledge. Even before you were born, before the creation of this world, before creation itself, he had a conversation with you. He foreknew you. So the word foreknew is God had a foreknowledge, a prognosis knowledge about us. Then he predestined. The word predestined means he created a destiny for us, a destination. And then we were sent on that assignment. You were sent on this earth for a mandate, an assignment, a purpose. No military officer, no military general sent somebody on an assignment without that person knowing what the assignment is. So when you discover your destiny and purpose on this earth, it's because you already knew it. You just had to discover it now because you are a spiritual person who is experiencing a natural disposition, if I can put it like that. Everyone has the ability to decide, even though God knew in his foreknowledge and his predestination. So people are like, okay, but if God knew we were sin, why doesn't he save us? He did. God knew in his foreknowledge in his predestination that you were going to sin. And therefore he created his son before the foundations of this world to bring in a discourse. God knew everything in his omniscience. If there was predestination or pre-election to salvation, there'd be no need to preach the gospel. So just as Esau willfully chose to give up his birthright, every single one of us have a choice to accept the message to repent and be baptized. Very, very simple. Jeremiah 1 verse 5, before I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. I want you to read Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 a little bit differently because there's a formation in the spiritual and there's a formation in the natural. In the natural, God prepared a body for us. You were known in heaven. You were set apart. You were called. You were commissioned, ordained, mandated by God. But the word there is new, a yada you. The word yada is a knowing. It's a sense of seeing, but it means a experiential knowing. Let's look at Jesus' life, the pre-existence with Christ. John chapter number one, verse one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, meaning that Christ existed before he was on this earth. John chapter number eight, verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and he was glad. Verse 58, listen to this. Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So he said, before I was born, I existed. Now I'm not putting you in the place of Christ. I'm just looking in the case of Christ. It is illegal for a spirit to dwell on this earth without a body. Why do you think demons are hunting for a body? They need a body. Hebrews 10 verse 5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. The word prepared there means to frame and join together. He said, when I came in, you prepared a body. Let me tell you, you were alive long before your body was alive. God prepared your body for the function, for the purpose that you were created for. If you are black, it's because of purpose. If you are white, it's because of purpose. 